cameras. Well, it's not just music that's had a huge change in the last, jeez, 10, 20 years? I mean, music's basically valueless now. You pay like a couple of bucks so you can listen to every song ever made. But one humongous thing that's changed is taking photos. Like when I was a kid, we'd have a big family outing. We'd get the, the disposable camera. You just point and hope. But something that was really special was every photo was precious. It was expensive. Every time you went click, that costs money. Not only that, you had to wait and go get them developed, so you didn't even know if you took anything decent. <laughs> you don't even think anymore. I mean, if you go scrolling through your photos, you're gonna see like, I don't know, screenshots of an alarm. Photos of the inside of your pocket. Wait, that's a modern thing. Only the last 15 years is that a thing. For the longest time, photos were super precious. And when I was a kid, one of my favorite Christmas presents ever was an old Polaroid camera, and gosh, that thing was just the best. I stinking love instant cameras, and so I've got a whole gaggle of them to show you, mate. It's a total hot mess. So the first two that I'm gonna show you are ones that I can't actually use anymore. It's a huge bummer, but, oh, this is special. <laughs> Look at that right there. This is the first ever Polaroid. Yeah. Oh, it's full of junk and everything. <laughs> yeah, man. Look at this for a flash. Beige. Boy, it stinks in it too. Oh, it's like a doctor's kit. Look at these wacky globes. Ooh. Oh, <laughs> there you go. This ain't fussy at all. But this is the guy. I mean, it's fun. People associate instant film cameras with like the 70s. That's when they got really popular, yes. But this first came out in 1948. Uh, yeah, man. Like. <laughs> Swing. Isn't it beautiful? This is the model 95, but this is the B model. I think this came out in the 50s. It's basically the same guy. Instant film cameras have been around for a long time. It doesn't spit it out for you. It's more of a manual kind of operation. Oh man, look, look at this amazing back on it. Isn't that awesome? It's simple, dingus. It's quite fussy. Still, you could have a photo right then and there. Look, it's got a handle. And the other one I got is the Polaroid Big shot! <laughs> wow! Uh, that's a diffuser for the flash. Just a big hollow empty shell. Because like cameras are just light barrels. That's it. There's, there's not a lot to them. I mean, look at shoebox cameras. You can get decent photos out of a pinhole in a cardboard box. But this guy came out in 1971 and all it does is headshots. That's it. There's the instructions. Look, there's a winner. So this is a rangefinder style, so meaning that you're not actually looking down the lens. I mean, the lens is here, but you're looking through this idiot. There you go, that's the go button. There you go. A famous user of these was Andy Warhol. Like, he's got so many celebrity headshots. Wow, do they look amazing. Uh, so, why can't I use these two different cameras? Well, they don't make the film anymore. They stopped making it ages ago. You can find, like, expired packs of it, but it literally works out to like 20 bucks a shot, even if the shot works, and this idiot needs special flashes in there. Oh man, it's it's a real shame. And like, you're probably looking at this and the first ever Polaroid going, man, they must have been so expensive. No way. These, I think this was 50 bucks. And I got it literally as just a piece to sit on a cabinet or something, because it looks amazing. Because functionally, these are useless. It's such a bummer, because as I said, they're just like a light barrel. They just need ammo for the cannon that they are. You, know, you put film in it, boom, it'll work. But they don't make the film, so these things are stinking useless. Oh well. When you think of Polaroid, you're thinking of clack, and then like you've got it instantly, it spits it straight out. Let me show you the daddy. I love having this just sitting on a table, because no one has any idea that this is a Polaroid camera. Not just a Polaroid camera, but the first of the ones that spit it out for you. All right, you just grab here. Three, two, one, whack. <laughs> it feels incredibly fragile and I hate doing that every single time. The Polaroid SX70. You ready? I'm gonna waste a shot just so you can see it. <laughs> Bam! Yeah, I think it's magnesium. It's stinking beautiful. So the big shot was a rangefinder camera where you're looking through that little window. Whereas this is an SLR. And I didn't appreciate what an SLR really was. Until I learned that it's because you're looking through the lens. Oh, barely. Hang on. Look, can you see that? You can barely see it. But you are literally looking down that lens. What you see in your viewfinder is what you're taking a photo of. And this big ugly thing at the top is the sonar autofocus. It uses sound 
How cool is that? <laughs> <laughs> the SX70s without the autofocus just looks so much cooler, but man, that's so neat. That's the light adjustment. Get very familiar with that because, yeah, you're going to take some awful looking photos. And that is the manual focus. Uh, because sometimes I find that the Sono autofocus doesn't work that good if you're trying to take a photo through glass. It'll focus to the distance of the glass. And yeah, so you got to go and do it yourself. Let me take a proper photo. You have to be so still when you're taking a photo of this. Like when you hit the button and the viewfinder goes blank, don't move. <laughs> it's not instant. The slightest bump or anything and it's gonna blur it, it's gonna mess it up and more likely you don't have this in the right spot and it's not gonna look good. That is so neat. It's gonna be fun watching these develop. So that was the first and just the legendary one. That is such a cool camera. But it wasn't the one that made things stupidly popular. 1977, the one step. There you go, it's got that hateful dial here that you're gonna play with all the time. It's a rangefinder style, so you're not actually looking down the lens itself. <laughs> and if you're wondering how do you focus then, well, you just gotta move backwards and forwards until it looks in focus in the rangefinder. Fix focus, that's all it does. But at the time, this was the world's simplest camera. Hey, I can finally show you how to load one of these. So I'm gonna talk about in a bit, yes, you can still get film. So these SX-70s ones, so the one step and the one I did before, they need this specific film. There is a lot of waste involved, I'm not a fan of that. Alright, it's, it's always got humorous guff on it because cultured, and you just stuff it in. It spits out that, and that's it. So you probably saw that strange tongue come out. I'm gonna waste another shot just to show you it. <laughs> that's to protect it from light for those first fractions of a second that it spits out. You can actually get those fitted to the older cameras, I just haven't bothered. Alright, I'm gonna take a proper photo. This one's gonna be in black and white. Why? I don't know, it's funny! If you're wondering what this thing in the top is, it's an expansion port. You can still buy, like they still make these. This is brand new. You can just add a flash. How cool is that? And yes, this will fit the SX-70 as well. Oh, look at our winners coming into focus here. Ugh. So the next one is the one that really kicked off my love for these again. I found it at Cashies, mate, where you can find your dreams. I think it was 10 bucks. It's from like 1980 something. The Polaroid One Step. This is the 635CL. This is proper 80s and you're ready? Whack. <laughs> <laughs> Rangefinder style, wham. There's that hateful thing that you're gonna be playing around too much with. There is some lens work you can do. But look at that, inbuilt flash, and I just love how it folds up. And it's the same style, like, ah, I meant to do this. <laughs> it's the same style, you load it up straight in. But this is a 600 series camera. So the SX-70s have their own film like this, but the 600s have a way better film. It's actually a little bit easier to get a hold of. Doesn't get as blurry, the colors are better. Can convert the old cameras to 600, but I haven't bothered. But yeah, I think this is like the iconic 80s tourist style. Let me take a proper photo. 10 bucks from Cashies. No restoration work needed. Because if you're wondering where like the energy comes for like the, the thing to spit out and the flash to work. I mean, here's a spent cartridge. Again, there's a lot of waste. I'm not a big fan of that. The battery lives in here. Ow, my fingers. There you go. That's the battery. How neat is that? I mean, <laughs> again, bit of a bummer. You don't actually use all the battery in it. So, you know, it's a bit of a wasteful hobby, but. Oh yeah, look at all these, look at all these amazing winners, man. Time Magazine's photo of the year. So you can see already, I mean, that's like the really popular one. I mean, beautiful design, but still, this guy being my favorite because of the fact that you can actually look down the lens and actually see if it's in focus or not. It's just annoying that it doesn't come with a flash or anything and it doesn't use 600 film. Let me show you the ultimate Polaroid. So as you can see, this guy, it looks like the SX-70, only it's plastic, which is actually a huge bummer. And it opens the same way, but this is the SLR 680. And what do you see? My autofocus and the flash boy. So this is like a hypercharged SX-70 with an inbuilt flash that uses 600 film. I mean, I hate that it's made out of plastic. That's kind of annoying. It just doesn't feel as nice. But in terms of like an instant camera to take really, really nice photos, this is the guy. Oh, look at that accidental one. Look, you can see my greasy face peering in and my crappy iPhone filming this whole mess. <laughs>
<laughs> this guy came out in 1982, and yet they just haven't topped this since. But I'm telling you, being able to look down the lens like this, like, whenever I'm going out and about, I do love bringing this. Although it is just really stinking fragile and redonkulously expensive. You know, I hate to... To want to lose it. So the last camera I got to show you. Well, I'm sure a whole bunch of you are thinking, oh man, imagine if they took the rugged, like, simplicity of this guy, but then had all the features that this guy has. The Polaroid Sun 660. I mean, still in its stinky box. Looks like the other guy done it. Well, you're a stinking idiot because, whoa, <laughs> yeah! This is up there as one of the coolest looking instant cameras, I'm telling you. And I just love how protected everything is. But there is one issue with this guy and that is, it's completely fucked. I got this for like 20 bucks on eBay in its box. Like, it just, it just doesn't shoot. It's got film in it, it doesn't shoot. It's such a bummer. Maybe I'll get this one fixed up, more like I'll go find one that just works right at the box because this was so cheap, I'm happy to have this as a display. So while these idiots are fading into existence, let me show you some guys here. Dark photos are gonna be the toughest. And so I've, I took some photos of Frank last night. Oh, hey, these are my favorites. Um, This is probably what you're gonna be spitting out for the first little while when you first get your SX-70 or something. Yeah. Took me ages to figure out what I was doing wrong, and honestly, I don't know what I was doing wrong. These were taken with the Cashies one, and as you can see, you know, I didn't quite get the focus right. I mean, that's Frank sitting in a little box with her head sticking out. Yeah, it's it's kind of blurry. The flash worked good. And this is when she was in her hammock. And again, it's just very blurry. These, with the SX-70, they're in focus. That's the thing, they're, they're really in focus. But yeah, it's just not enough light. You know, and then this guy with the flash and everything. There you go. That is so much better. Look, you can make out her fatty wrinkles, Frankie Big Fatty. All right, let's have a look at our winners here. Well, there's a good one. Yeah, that one's pretty blurry and not that great. That's the SX-70, <laughs> oh well. There's the one step. We can call that one the worst one. Um, I believe this was the Cashies one and that's pretty good. I mean, look at it. It looks straight out of the 90s, huh? You can see my pathetic setup that you're looking at. Look, there's my phone precariously sitting in a cheap tripod. True story. And yeah, the last one, <laughs> even still, wasn't that great. And that's the thing. If someone hands you like a beautifully in-focus framed Polaroid photo, they know how to use it. Because there you go, that's using the dream guy, and it still didn't come out good. But honestly, that's the fun of it. Games are fun when they have a little bit of risk to them. Every one of these photos is valuable. I mean, I had to demo it for you, huh? These, <laughs> these are trash. You're probably wondering, like, well, didn't Polaroid go out of business? And yes, they did, back in, like, uh, 2001. Polaroid kept making film up until, like, 2008, but then they announced they were stopping that, too. And that's when the Impossible Project stepped in to save it. They saved the Netherlands factory, and in an amazing turnaround, they're not called the Impossible Project anymore. They're just called Polaroid. They, they've resurrected the, the... These are brand new. You can buy these right now. SX-70, 600. If you've been interested in these old Polaroid cameras and you're thinking, oh man, like, I'll never get the film for them. No way. This is the time to get into it right now. I think it was in 2020 they announced that they were officially called Polaroid. And it's why I was happy to buy these because honestly, I'm low-key hoping that they're working on how to get film for these because these cost nothing. And yeah, they're useless without the film, but I hope that they're working on it. I don't even care if it's expensive because at the moment, like getting expired film is ridiculous. Come on, boys, let me use my big shot. Come on, I want Frank headshots with my big shot. So go dig out Nana's old Polaroid. Polaroid, head on down to Cashies and find one for nothing, pick up some film and just start photographing strangers and yell while you're at it too, why not? And well, that's it. <laughs> thanks so much for watching, huge thanks to my patrons, especially these stinky names right here because mate, one dollar a month, I do extra videos. Before we talk about that mate, I've got extra content, I've got Garbage Time, my alternative channel about anything, super fun, and I've also got my drum stream on Float Plane, where again, if you want to watch me live stream and yell at things, there you go. Uh, but for one dollar a month mate, well, I'm here in an industrial park in a warehouse, and I'm going to take these three out, and I'm going to photograph the wasteland for you, and we're going to have a little tour of my beautiful area called uh, just the wasteland. It's industrial park. <laughs> Piles of rubbish everywhere. But thanks so much, mate. I'll see you all next time. So, like, Frank, mate, I'm just telling you this because, like, I'm your mate. But, oh, right. Oh, yeah, yeah. We'll come out for an argument, are you? Hey? Where's that 20 bucks? Where's that 20 bucks, Frank? Where's that? 
Where's that 20 bucks, Frank? Hey, you borrowed it from me 10 minutes ago, and I want my 20 bucks back. Frank's coming in for a fight, guys. It's all good, mate. Me and Frank made up, you know. Turns out she never borrowed the 20 bucks. I mean, turns out uh, she stole it, actually. It's, uh, it's actually quite upsetting. But I'm terrified of Frank, so it's just, you know, I just need to go along with it. Yay, Frank.